So you need to pull off your rear bumper cover for whatever reason. Well, what's involved? How easy is it? How hard is it? That's what we're gonna find out. I've never pulled one of these off, but we're gonna do it today. And it should be pretty simple from what I can tell and from what I've seen online. Basically, first step, you have to pull your tail lights off to get access. Then there's three push pins here. And then there's some either push pins or screws underneath, which we'll look at once we get under there. There is, and don't mind the dirt, I haven't cleaned it since I raced. There's some push pins and a bolt right there, which is slowly getting covered in rubber from all my racing. And then once you have all those out, it's just simply snapping this out from all the way up here and up here, pulling up and off. That's how I understand it. But again, I've never done it. And I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you haven't either. So if you have a 2015 and up Dodge Challenger, this is how it's gonna work. If you have a 2014 below, I believe it's basically the same. There's not much that changed in here, design taillights, but the rear bumper should attach basically the same way. So with that, let's go ahead and get started and get that rear bumper cover off. Okay, so a taillight, let's get started. So for this, just kind of get underneath here, and this is kind of a soft rubber, so probably be easier to get some kind of tool, but you can even do it with your fingers and just pull straight out, and then you see two clips, that's it. Okay, now hopefully you can see, again, two wing nuts connector, and there's a little clip there. So for the connector, there's no like little push things or tabs, or at least, well, there, I guess there is a little tab, but for me, it just pulled straight out. And then the wing nut's super easy. You don't even need a tool of any kind. Okay, with those two wing nuts off, now it's completely loose with one exception. There is, I don't know if you can see on camera, a little pin right here. It's actually more of a tab. There's a little part you press here because it kind of snaps in. So you just squeeze it with your fingers. Then once you get it out, that's it. Just pull it straight out. Okay, so now to the bumper removal. Let's go ahead and pull our top push pins off first. Again, there are just three of them. Just get a little screwdriver to get underneath here. And just wiggle it up until it pops out. And do that for all three. Okay, and you may need to get some pliers or something. There we go. And that's all that is. So you have three of these. You should be able to reuse these if you don't. Definitely have a fastener kit on hand. You do want to be careful because this part, obviously, when you open the trunk, you are going to see it. So you probably want to try not to scratch it up. Right here, obviously, you have your trunk, trunk bumper supports. Now, I have seen, I believe on a 2014s and older, these are like really big to where it actually won't fit through these holes. So if you have that problem, you will might have to take those off. But obviously, as you can see here, on this 2020, they're smaller than the holes, so it'll just come right off. Okay, and then also right here, you have a little eight millimeter bolt, and you'll need to take that off so that this can come off because this is attached right here. And it's not on very tight. In fact, if you saw, I like barely applied any pressure. So with that, this is now completely loose. So one there, one on this side. In fact, do I even need a ratchet? Nope, look at that. Didn't even need a ratchet. You can just hand unscrew that. And it makes sense, I mean, it's just plastic. It really doesn't need to be torqued down or anything. Okay, now let's go down here by the wheel liners. And yeah, let's scrape off some of this rubber here. Okay, a little rubber scraped, I can see a pin here. One, two, three, four. And our nut, or sorry, bolt. That bolt off. Okay, now these look like the type of push pin that has a middle that you just have to, I believe, pop in. Okay, so what we did, I just took some pliers and broke it off. So it does look like you just push through the center and push this out, but it's a little bit tough. And this is why you want 
Good idea for anyone that does work on their vehicles. Have one of these fastener kits, and I'll link to it in the description below. I don't know if I can find this exact one, but I'll link to a similar one. Most clips are universal, so when you get one of these sets, they'll usually have some that works. And look at this. I looked in here, and I do have the exact same one. You can actually see the head identical, and that bottom part identical. So as you can see, what you do is you just straighten this out. You shove this into the hole. So as you can see, then just push it back and now rip it in. That actually is going to be a little bit tougher to do because you have to get behind there to push this in. So you know what I might do? Instead of that, I think I'm just going to use a different clip, which this is a common fender liner clip. It looks about the same width. So yeah, so I think I'm just going to use a completely different clip to make it easier because that seems like it'd be a hassle to really rivet that or get that tightened in. So let's do that for the rest of these again. All right, there we go. Those four clips done. And now that is off, so that's completely loose. And man, when you do a lot of racing, you have all this rubber and crap all on it. <laughs> Hard to get these. That'd be a lot easier if it was clean and you didn't have all this rubber and sh stuff on it, but. Okay, now for the other side, which is exactly the same, so you don't really need to watch this. And again, I'm just gonna cut off all the plastic clips. There we go, four broken clips that we will replace with brand new. And this part is done. Okay, and down here looks like we have six clips, one on each side outside of the exhaust and then four in the middle here. And these look like you're just standard, more standard clips. So I think I might be able to reuse these or I may not, we'll see. But it's the kind you just gotta get a screwdriver in and it pops right out. All right, all the clips are off from down here. Now we should be able to unattach it. Actually, so, one thing I didn't notice until just now when I got under the car, there are two more screws bolts here. That, you can see this is part of the cover and clearly I missed this. So it looks like I kind of ripped it a little bit. So yeah, don't forget those two bolts too. I guess I didn't really look all that good but there we go okay so now with all the clips off the top the bottom off the wheel liner sides all that's left now is to basically unsnap the bumper and so basically how it works is it comes straight out over here and then up here it actually goes up so the order you want to do it at least from what i've heard or seen start from down here so just kind of grab the side Oh man, that pulls straight out so easy. So that's pretty much out. Now let's do the other side. Let's get behind this dirty wheel liner. Straight out. Okay, now with that out, believe this. So looks like I'm getting stuck right here. There we go. Oh yeah, you can kind of see how it goes around. So this is where I got stuck. So I can't quite get outward force, but we got it now. So that's off. Looks like it's stuck on this support. Okay, so another tip I guess I just learned. Before you do that, make sure that is up above the trunk supports. Now this here, we got it all the way up here. Now pull up right. 
there we go. That pulled up. That's out, okay. Completely disassembled there. It's starting to fall down. Let's grab it by the edges here. Now we're gonna have some electrical connectors. Looks like this clip kind of pulls out. Yep, just like that. And that should come right out. What else we got in here? I think that's it. What's it stuck on? Oh, there we go. I just need to pull, you need to pull straight back from the bottom. Looks like it got stuck there. And there we go. Let's move this bumper over to the side here. Now you want to be careful with this because this is painted on the back. So you don't really want to, you don't want to scratch it up. All right, so we'll leave it right there. Yeah, the absorber is part of the bumper cover. You can see it's clipped in all over here. All right, and here we go. Here is the rear of the car with no bumper cover on. So now I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do, which I took the bumper cover off for this right here, which that is its own video. Why? Because I got this lightweight support from CVI. Once I get that done, we'll be back in this video to go through and reverse the process to reinstall the fascia and see if it goes in as smooth as it, well, it didn't really go smooth out, but kind of did, so be back in a second. Okay, so now I got done the reason why I need to remove the bumper cover in the first place, which in case you're interested is because I added a lightweight bumper support, which is its own separate video if you are interested in that. So now it's time to put the bumper back on and basically it's the reverse of everything we did to take it off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna speed through me putting it back on, not even talk, cause I'm not gonna delay about it. I'm just gonna tell you really quick the overall process again. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna pull it up, hang it up, snap it in on the sides, left and right, and we're gonna connect the wiring to it. And then once it's snapped in, we'll put in the plastic pins on the top and then the plastic pins on the bottom and then the pins on the wheel liners with the bolt on the wheel liners. And then after that, we go to the tail lights. Now for all the pins, I'm going to reuse the ones on the top. And these are from the bottom and they're still good. They're dirty, they're whatever, but no one sees them. They're functional. So I'm just going to reuse the bottom ones. And then again, the wheel liner we cut off. So I'm not going to use the exact same one. I'm going to use these different, slightly different ones. So that's what we got to do. So let's slap it on.
Okay, I so said I'm not going to talk, but quick break. So, you have the plastic absorber. Make sure that it's around the metal absorber. I just realized the metal part was underneath the plastic and that was holding it up. So, that's why I was having trouble. I went underneath. Man, I'm going to need to buff the car now. Now it's on there and everything's lined up. Okay, change of plan. No other clips are a little bit too loose, so I got these other Christmas tree clips, a little bit thicker. So it's on there. And there we go, bumper cover back on. So again, a quick tip, I had trouble lining it up because the plastic absorber, which is clipped to the cover, was not going around the bumper support. It kind of went off and that was causing issues. I think on the 2014s and older, the absorber actually just snaps onto the support, so it's easier. But on these 2015s and up, because that absorber is attached to the bumper cover, you have to make sure that lines up. I didn't do that, so that's why I had trouble on this side. The other side got, kind of got lined up after I wiggled it a bit, and that's why it fell into place. So reinstalling, not as easy, or at least not as simple as I thought, because uh, I didn't realize that part of it, because you don't really recognize it when you're pulling it off. You just pull it off, so. Anyway, now we gotta get the taillights on, and we're all done. And just line it up. You see the holes right there? Push it in. Now if you can see the pin will go into there and just push until it snaps and now you're in place. Just throw these wing nuts on and connect it up. And then finally this little plastic piece right here. All done. All right, now, so our tail lights are back in. We got it lined up. Everything's clipped. No extra screws in or pins anywhere. So the biggest thing we learned, make sure that absorber lines up around the support when you're reinstalling it. Other than that, for pretty straightforward, pretty easy. So hope this video helped. If you haven't done it before, it's always good to see the process for yourself before you tackle it, just to see anything. And it never fails. Something messes up for me and we learn things the hard way. So maybe you watch another video and it just went straight on, everything was good. And then you put it on and you have an issue like me, you're like, what's going on? And, but my luck, what can go wrong does go wrong for me. So it's just how it goes. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. See you at Drag Strip.